Welcome everybody to the Comic Collectors Guild official YouTube channel. Today we're bringing to you a very special person, Karen Whitfield. She is the original Batgirl after the show ended who traveled with Adam West and Burt Ward. So we have her on the show today. Uh, we're going to talk about her life. Uh, she wrote a book about her whole life. So hopefully, you know, we can get more bits and pieces about it and give you more information about who Batgirl was at that time while they were traveling across the United States. So today we have LT at House of Geekery. We have Nadia, Comic Geek Girl. And here we are. What do you guys think? No, I'm excited, man. We've been playing this for a couple of weeks. We finally uh, got uh, a set up a time where we can all get together, interview her, uh, you know, talk about her life, her book. I mean, a lot of people didn't know there was a Batgirl no. after the show. You no. know, a traveling Batgirl with Adam West and Burt Ward. I mean, that was just, you know, exciting enough to warrant this type of interview. Hey, exactly. Nadia. What are your thoughts, Nadia? Um, super excited. This is really cool. Like, um, my, of course, like my dad got me really into like Batman growing up as a kid at Adam West. And then like hearing that there was like another background, it's pretty cool to find out. Perfect. Right. So why don't we bring her in and, and we'll start from there. Cool. Good. Right. It'll uh, be a minute. She'll come in. <laughs> Sorry, technology, it gets slow sometimes. You know how things work. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Hey, Karen. Hi there. Hi, Karen. Well, I'm Izzy, president of the Comic Collectors Guild. We have LT, vice president at House of Geekery, and Nadia, comic geek girl. Hi, so, everybody. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me on your show. This is awesome. Great. Actually, that that tastic. <laughs> that tastic. <laughs> Love that. So, um, I guess we, we're excited. All of us are super excited to have you on the show today. And you know, when we found out who you were, you know, I especially me, I was overwhelmed as I couldn't believe we have a real live Batgirl oh, wow. after the show, which was amazing. And yeah. and you have an amazing story to tell. So we definitely want to hear that today. Uh, who wants to kick off talking to Karen? Uh, no, I mean, Karen, hi, my name's LT. I'm, calling you, from, I'm calling you from Texas, and uh, I'm, I'm appreciative of that we were able to get you on the show today. Um, first of all, I, I've read your book, and I loved it, and hopefully, you oh. know, uh, we're going to be talking a lot about it, but, you know, let, let's start things off before we really dive into it. Let's just start by telling us why you wrote this book. Great question. Um, well, it had been so many years and I was in hiding, if, so to speak. And mm -hmm. um, I wrote it because I felt like... Um, I just needed to get the story out there. I know a lot of people, my family and friends, um, people that did know about it and I came home and some people didn't even know that I, I did that. But it was just, um, I felt like I was just led to go down that path again. Um, my God or fate or someone might need to read it or just to show that um, I was out there and, and just to... Um, remind people of who Adam West and Burt Ward really were as people too. Cause um, you know, now that Adam's gone and everybody loves him, um, you know, and people were around him all those years, but I was with them day in and day out for five, six years. I mean, you know, with Burt and then with Adam when we traveled and I just, before we all, you know, get older, I want to be able to say uh, who they really were and to remember them because as time goes on, I hope they're not forgotten, but you know how life is. I mean, they're true legends and they are true superheroes and they're definitely Batman and Robin. Yes, yeah. they are. That's awesome. And, and I want to, I want to tell the story. So that, and also my own life, the show, a part of it that I did, did, um, was involved with. And then, you know, now that I've um, 
written it, I've had people come to me that did know about it, like my family, my, my mother's brothers, my uncles and, and aunts, and they were always, they always wondered what they were like to me, because when I came back, I didn't talk about it. I didn't let my family talk about it, because I had to make a decision. I had to uh, keep with that decision and not have that girl look over my shoulder or or the Bat family, um, I had to, I, I wanted to have my own family to raise. And now that I've written it, they, they said they were really glad to read it because it showed that they were kind to me and nice and they didn't make me come home or they weren't, it wasn't, um, there was no um, issues of being bad to me, you know, because you hear about all these things happening, especially now. Um, and, and how, how good they were to me. And it was my decision to come home. Um, of, um, and I wanted to let people know that as well. No, that was, that was clearly uh, uh, spoken to us in the book on how you, you know, everything was under your accord and you were not forced to leave. You were not forced to join anything. And it comes across really nice. Yeah. So that, which is good. Do you have Which any funny? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Nadia. <laughs> when I, I was going to say, do you have any funny stories you want to share, like like memorable moments from traveling with that? I'm Well, I have I have this one in my book. The funniest to me is when I met Adam. Um, I mean, you know his character, and he was like that. I mean, to everybody. And the first time I met him. Um, it was in the airport in Texas where we had to fly from LA, Bert and I did, and then we met Adam in Texas. I'm not sure where he was coming from. It Texas. Took, um, Portland, <laughs> Texas, yeah. And um, and I saw real cowboys there, actually. And it was That's fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, 40 years ago, I don't know if they wear those things now like they did. <laughs> but, um, There's still cowboys everywhere. <laughs> so Adam, um, we met in the airport and he was, um, it was, he was Adam. And then we, we couldn't fly into a city because it was a terrible rainstorm. So we couldn't uh, fly to the next city. So they had rented a limo. And I sat in between Adam and Bert in the limo. And it was at least a two to three hour. I mean, it was a long drive. I mean, I know it was like two or three hours. And Adam was Adam the whole time. I mean, so was Bert. And he would, he would sing to the uh, music and um, change his words. Um, to the music, to what he wanted them to say, and he would he he made us laugh the whole time. Even the uh, limo driver, he was really funny. Um, mm -hmm. And and that was the very first time I met him. You know, and I had heard stories, and Bird had, you know, um, prepared me of meeting him because of um, you know he is um, flirtatious and he's fun and fun loving, and so you know, and just to, and I was I was you know twenty years old, and that's young I mean you know and and back then I mean now you know the 20 year olds are so um more involved um or more I'm not sure what the word is but um they uh it is it, about 40 years ago it was more isolated you know and I was from the south and I had never traveled anywhere really or had been anywhere so uh, here I am in the middle of Adam West and Burt Ward, Batman and Robin, and they were truly in their characters, even though they weren't dressed, I felt like at that time, of watching them 10 years before that, when I was a little girl. And, you know, and I'm sitting there thinking, and I'm laughing, and Burt's hysterical. I mean, he, he would laugh so hard at him at times, he would, he would cry. I mean, his, he would he'd have tears. And of course, Burt was trying to get prepared for the next city, you know, for the city and what we were doing, because he was the business aspect of it he he took care of a lot of those things but and and it was just funny and I remember saying oh if somebody could see me now I mean if if, if people could see me in the back of this limo with them but it, it took a minute to hit me but then when it did it was it was really surreal and that was one of the funniest um moments that I remember having and then how Adam would tease you know waitresses when we'd go places and he'd <laughs> make people laugh and you know, and just the fans. I mean, he was um, the most memorable time was with Adam, of course, with Bert too. Uh, it was it was just fun. So basically, they were just down to earth, 
two individuals who yeah, love that. were in the limelight yeah. as well. Yeah. So and that, it was that's 10 great. years after the show. So, you know, it, it wasn't too long after the show, so they were definitely in that limelight. And they were, they were just like us. You know? Wow, that's awesome. And to be still carrying that, uh, you know, at that time with no social media, no, you know, interaction with fans, you know, to still be in touch with, you know, uh, fans wherever you went to. That, that's, that's, that says a lot about the staying power of Batman and Robin. Exactly. Yeah. Generations too. Yeah, yeah, generations. So I, I just, I'm just still starstruck, you know, hearing this. And I could just imagine, you know, you traveling the entire country with them and seeing and experiencing all types of new things and, and you being back girl. I mean, we see yeah. that your costume right behind you, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. Now, uh, could you tell us a little more about your costume? I'm curious. Well, the original one, you know, is um, preserved. And I, um, I was 100 pounds back then. So I couldn't wear it now even if I wanted to. But it's the original cow. Um, oh. And so when I spoke to DC Comics, um, I asked them, could I recreate another costume so that I can wear it to Comic-Cons and things that I feel like I want to wear it to. And of course they did. So I had a girlfriend. She's a wonderful seamstress. And I knew if anybody could recreate her, it would be her, uh, Judy. Her name is Judy Knox. And she recreated it beautifully and perfectly. No one would even know it's not the uh, real one except for me really I don't even think that Bert could would know but um and then you know I purchased new boots because, because I'm 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 heavier I, my, I mean everything you know as we grow <laughs> as we get, <laughs> we age, we grow. so um but yeah I mean it fits nice I mean I um and it looks it and the first time I put it on when she made it it was just very surreal because I'm like wow wow this is this is Wow, then Judy did a great job because it looks great. Yeah. Now, L LT, you were you and me, we had a conversation. You were telling me that that costume, the design came from where? The actual well, look of it? From what I read, you, uh, Karen, that costume was not, of course, the costume from the TV series. This is the uh, comic version of uh, of the costume is that correct yes it's number 359 of the comic version um right. and when um that girl was first introduced um for actually a tv show um yes. you know uh, yeah. we have that picture there so we can see that it, it, it almost looks exactly like that i mean uh you know yeah it from, almost from looks graphic. exactly like it yeah so um william dozier so when, when I was asked to um, travel with them as that girl, um, they decided, I, I'm assuming it was DC Comics decided, decided to have me wear that costume because, um, you know, uh, Yvonne Craig wore the purple and gold in the TV series. And so they didn't want people to be confused because I wasn't Yvonne Craig. And it also brought out the comic um, world versus the TV world. Uh, brought the comic um, and because that was the original one. So they wanted to bring that out and um, have me wear that. And that was when I first wore it was in 1978. So in 1977, that February, um, Batman Adventures came out and it was the Bat family, um, Batgirl, Robin, and, um, and, and um, Batman. And she wore basically the suit, but it was more of a lighter blue, but it was still in that same... Um, age, you know, the age of um, Batgirl. So they felt like just for me to take on that. And, I, and and fans knew, it's like, you know, the comics were huge back then. And of course they still are. And I, I believe fans knew that I was the, the comic um, Batgirl versus the TV series Batgirl, even though a few people asked me, but not too many. Right, well, at least now, uh, whoever watches this show, they're gonna know now, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So. Now, in your book, you you didn't start off as Batgirl. You were introduced later as yeah. part of the what uh, was it the triple duo? I mean, the, I'm sorry. The instead of the dynamic duo it was the uh, 
dynamic, dynamic trio. trio. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, which Batgirl made um, Bat Family, you know, because it was a Batman and Robin. Then when Batgirl came on, it became um, came into um, traveling with them or being a superhero with them. It was the Bat Family. But yes, um, I met Burt Ward um, when I was 20 in um, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, and we met and um, I, I moved out to California um, to be with him. And we did live together. Uh, and I traveled with um, Adam and Bert. Um, and as we traveled, um, I remember we were at dinner one night and Adam had mentioned that um, Yvonne wasn't traveling with them. I'm not, I don't know why she didn't want to, but um, she wasn't traveling with them and said, you know, wonder if Karen would like to travel as Batgirl. And I'm sitting there and listening and, and he looked at me and Bert looked at me and I said, <laughs> sure, I, yeah, it'll be fun. Sure. I'm, here. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. And, and then a few weeks later, not probably, I'm not sure how long that time was, but it wasn't too long. A suit came, Bert brought the suit home and, he, um, the DC Comics, I had had someone make it and um, you know, he knew the size. He did ask me what size I was and things. And then he brought it and it fit me like a glove. It was just um, beautiful. That's awesome. and, then, and the first time I put it on and even when I put um, this one on after Judy made it, I felt like a superhero. It, there's something about it. And, and I think that's why people like Comic-Cons because they can dress like their favorite superhero in Comic Con, yes. and it really gives some kind of power, and that and you feel it. It's hard to explain it until you do, but I did. I felt the power. But of course, I've been traveling with them for about six months or so, and I saw how they transform from Adam West and Burt War to Batman and Robin. It was just, you know, it was just unbelievable and surreal. But then when I put that suit on. Um, that day, I felt almost the same thing. I mean, I felt like, wow, there was something in there. Yeah, not not you should know. She does a a lot of cosplay as well. So okay. and she goes and so to much fun. <laughs> just get into character, and you feel empowered. Don't you? you feel empowered. It's just uh, really. What characters do you do you um, cosplay? Um, Catwoman, Harley Quinn. Um, uh, I do some like other like comic stuff and like Celine Underworld vampires. And oh, wow. That's it's awesome. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, Nadia, what, I know you had a couple of questions you wanted to ask Karen. What do you Yeah, got? Um, definitely. Um, I'm, I'm happy you touched upon how did you make the costume? Because that was actually a question that feels personal to me, like making costumes. Um, but getting to travel at like such a young age, how did you just like prepare to pick up and go? like? How did you, um, going to all these different places, Sorry. was there like anywhere in particular that felt like special or scary or just, just the thought of traveling like everywhere and just picking up and going just sounds so fun. Well, I, I didn't think about it. I didn't think, oh, you know, I didn't, I just was ready. I, my life is like that. I've always been that way. My spirit is just to uh, have fun, enjoy life and just go and, and be there and you know don't don't think about it because once you think about it you're going to think oh gosh this is going to happen or that's going to happen or what you know what do they expect just go i've always been go with the flow type personality and um i've always loved um people and visiting um, new places and, and meeting new people so i mean i was and and you know and adam and bert you know, Bert, of course, knew that for me to know him three months later, I was, I moved to California. I mean, what a big thing, what a big decision to, to do. And I didn't really think about it. I just remember just, okay, doing it. I can always come home. Okay, let's do this. Let's just see what happens. But it was huge, especially 40 years ago. It was huge. But um, they, um, I, I, I was always ready. It seemed like, I mean, I just, love to do it. And I, you know, like what I was just saying, I believe, um, Adam saw that in me, saw the, um, you know, just enjoy life with them and just, let's just do this. Right. You know? That's great. Could you imagine? And, and, and I actually have a question. Now, um, traveling all around, you, you were there as, uh, for Batgirl, 
but to more for the moms and daughters. I mean, what was um, the exact dynamic of how you were supposed to be Batgirl? Like, how was that supposed to go on, you know, while you were traveling? Um, you mean after I was in the suit and we all walked in together? Right, or, right. Uh, yes. I mean, we, I mean, we just, um, you know, at Bert, Batman and um, Robin and then Batgirl. So we would all walk in um, together. And um, Batman and Robin, they um, almost put on a little show, not very long, but enough to get the crowd excited. And right. I would sort of just stand there, you know, and watch them like I'm on guard, you know. And then we would sit at a long table uh, together and they would see Batman first and then Robin and then Batgirl. Um, that's how it was. And all the little girls and the mothers were excited to meet me. I mean, it, it was just so um, surreal to see that. And, and I was really excited because I wanted them to feel uh, braver and stronger uh, like I did 10 years before that when I saw Yvonne Craig as Batgirl. I mean, it wasn't too, she was one of the first ones to uh, live incarnation on TV to show, um, you know, girls and little girls that they can be um, a superhero in their life. Oh, and for other yeah, people. and that's awesome. Yeah, and I wanted people to feel that when they met me, because I remember what that felt like. And I was hoping, and that's one reason why I wanted to do it. I, I thought that would be exciting when they asked me. I mean, that's great because, you know, it, for the comic community being more of a, let's say dominated, you know, male dominated industry, you at that time were already showing woman empowerment, yeah. which, which is great. You know, you did this so many years earlier and now we have a lot of women in, in comics in the comic industry who are, are, who are showing this, which is great. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that balance. It's, it, we're getting that balance now, which is awesome. Yeah. So uh, what are you thinking LT? I see the I see the cogs turning. Well, I I I could just imagine. I mean, we've all been to cons, and we know how it is waiting in line to meet the celebrity to get their autographs. You know, and I can just imagine. And you're saying what? What was it? Seventy eight, seventy nine. I was, you know. In fact, I there's a picture of me. I my mom made me a Robin Burt Ward costume. I uh -huh. was Robin. <laughs> And I can just imagine myself standing in line, you know, to get an autograph from, yeah. Yeah, from, from and, the likes and of car shows. You know, it wasn't Comic Con back then. Oh, yeah. yeah. There were car malls shows, and malls and, um, right. and, and um, you know, car dealerships opening up and they had us come. So it was smaller venues, but it was huge lines. And, and that's one thing I want to say. I, I have to say, I mean, Going forward 40 years, you know, you've, meet, you've met, I've met so many people since then and how people are. And I tell you, I mean, remembering how Adam and Bert were back then, I was so young and watching. I mean, Adam was 49 years old when I met them and Bert was 32. Think about that. That's, that's huge. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. And I'm standing there looking at, you know, them, him, this right. powerful person, sweet and and nice and I'm and just and I never heard and I remembering back them talking bad about people or complaining of oh we have to do this we have to do that they were always ready I mean they were always ready and then they were Adam and Bert and when they put those suits on they were Batman and Robin I truly I mean they their voices their actions their their, their beings. I mean, they, they were Batman and Robin and that taught me how to be Batgirl. I mean, I knew, and I, and I couldn't, I mean, they were, you know, these men, I, I just, I knew that I wanted to be, I wanted them to be proud of me, especially when I put on the suit and especially in front of people. I wanted them to be proud of me as much as I was of them. And, um, and it worked, you know, I love That's that. Awesome. I was going to say, like, how did it feel being Batgirl and being empowered? And like, who, who else has inspired you? Like in this like superhero life, you've probably met so many like celebrities or like writers and comic artists. Was there anybody else that like truly um, influenced you? Other than them, when they were in the suit, um, 
Yes, I mean, I, are we going, I mean, are you asking me like um, who I wrote about you? First, your, your question was one time about who I wrote about in the book of those people who inspired me. Right. Or are you asking, um, I'm just kind of, not sure about uh, no i believe either either the celebrities yeah. you met you wrote in the book or just in life or just in life yeah okay um well actually i, I mean i I'm, i like comics too i like superwoman i think she's great i think she's um so powerful and like you know um that girl she didn't have any superpowers she was um human and mm -hmm. she had her own powers by her own skills and and then when you compare it to um, Su uh, Wonder Woman, it's, it's fun to see the differences in, in those two. But Wonder Woman really um, empowers me. And, um, but in people in general, I mean, some of the people that I've met, like way back then, um, you know, like people that became superheroes through life. Um, that I met back then that I thought they were super people and then when they actually became real life superheroes um, number one was Paul Michael Glazer's wife Elizabeth mm. Glazer I wrote her about her in the book when I met her when I met Paul oh my gosh he was so dreamy I mean I know 40 years ago people thinking he was but he, he really was but then when I met his wife and she came to our home to bring the contract because he was um, Bert was handling his um, fan fan club well and poster and things like that back then when before it was social media and everything we have now but um she came to the home and she made me feel I was so nervous I was like and Bert said I have to go out you know Elizabeth Glazer's going to come she's going to give you the contract and I'm like oh my gosh what do I talk to her about what do I say how am I he said just be yourself so she came in and she was so kind and so sweet and so nice and she asked me all about me you know like like I was special you know she asked me all about me and asked me you know where are you from how did you meet you know what's you know what are you doing now and just really cared and then um a year later you know she contracted um AIDS um by having a blood transfusion when she um was having her baby and then it's horrible yeah, it was, uh, and that was, that was when AIDS first started, you know, people didn't really know, they probably weren't checking for those kind of things when they were given blood and stuff, and which is, which is sad, and then um, the child, um, she did also con uh, contract, you know, have it from the bre her breast milk, you know, her first daughter, um, and um, actually her only daughter, I guess, Ariel, well, she, um, and so what Elizabeth did, she became the head of the Children's AIDS Foundation. She uh, set that in play, and this 1981, and then I think in 1994 um, uh, she passed away. But with with the AIDS, and then um, Ariel, she did in 1988. Um, and I followed her because she impressed me so much after going through all that she did, and she was so kind. And I, you know, she's a legend. She, you know, in the AIDS um, right. Foundation. You know, and I, I think she's a real life superhero. Um, and Farrah Fawcett. And Farrah Fawcett. Fawcett. <laughs> she That's was, awesome. Oh my goodness. When I first met her, <laughs> she was just beautiful. I, I couldn't even stop staring at her. And I know I don't she never I don't know if she thought it was rude, but I could not help staring at her. Mm -hmm. She was one You're of the starstruck. Those, That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> You're starstruck. I was starstruck. She's right after the red bathing suit, you know, how, you know, and even women, men loved her. Oh, you know, women did too. I mean, they saw the beauty and the sweetness of her. But, um, and then when I met her, she was very uh, quiet and poised and just uh, really sweet. Um, and, um, you know, at first I thought, is she stuck up? She's not really talking, but she wasn't. That was just her personality. And so, and then 10 years ago, and I remember how nice she and how she was 10 years ago, she passed away with cancer. Right. I and remember showed that dark side of what it was like. I mean, I don't even know if I could do that. I mean, maybe, but she showed that dark side I and mean, she was a true superhero. She knew her days were numbered and she showed the world. And right. I think that was, um, that was, that was just amazing. Me. Wow. Yeah, and on know, a I, side note, Farrah Fawcett was born in Corpus, which is 
and uh, two hours from where oh, I live. Yeah, she's a Texas girl. That's great. Yeah, little Southern girl. And you right. know, when I was out there, when I would visit, I mean, we would go to um, restaurants and stuff like that, and people would hear me speak. They would always ask me, the closest Southern state, I believe, is Texas. They would say, oh, are you from Texas? And I'm like, oh, no, North Carolina. They're like, North Carolina? That's on the other side of the country. <laughs> and, so and, I, 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 and I would tease people. I would say, yeah, so when I get home, I have to wear the big Southern, um, you know, skirt and hoop and skirt and stuff. As soon as I get off the airplane, I have to put that on and have to go to the, um, the plantation. And, you know, my life is completely different and people would stare at me like really that really goes on <laughs> and you know I mean 40 years ago I, I could say something like that and I'm like oh no I'm just kidding and, but that was funny Bert really loved those stories when I would tease people like that like they really believed it because most people back then had not even I mean we didn't have flights people would just go to North Carolina across the country like right. that. So. so I I when you and me were having a talk before this interview um, you were telling me about uh, a funny story when you actually had to call, you had to make a phone call to get permission for your book. Yeah. And I, I want everyone to know this story because I think it's great. Yeah. So, go um, ahead. Well, my hands, um, I knew I needed to call DC Comics. I mean, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to publish the book and I did not want to be in trouble of not getting the permission to do it. So, I called, um, I mean, I really thought about it and thought about which day would be the perfect day and I prayed about it. Well, I came to um, call on Adam West's birthday, September 19, um, 2019. Um, and um, actually 2018, I'm sorry. Um, I called on his birthday and um, and I, I found the number on the internet and the the receptionist patched me up to Jim Lee's office just like that and his secretary Dora answered the phone and um I told her who I was and first she said how did you get this office I'm like I just called and they, I googled it <laughs> I googled it <laughs> I had Jim on speed dial <laughs> I love Google so I, I said I just I just called and um and and, and here here you are and she's like Oh, okay. Well, what do you want from us? And I said, well, I'm Karen Whitfield and I wrote a book about traveling with um, Adam West and Burt Ward 40 years ago. And it's called Back Driven West. There was a very, there was a pause, like a little quietness. And I'm sitting there like, you know, what, <laughs> hello. And she was like, um, okay, so you traveled with Adam West and Burt Ward 40 years ago. She said, where have you been? And she said, I, you know, I thought you were a myth, honestly. She, I said, no, I, I was in hiding and here in North Carolina and I'm now back and, and I wrote this book and she asked me about it. And then um, we had a nice conversation. Um, her, uh, part of her family um, was in had it was her daughter I think her daughter's husband was also um living in North Carolina we just had had a hurricane a couple of weeks um before that so we were talking about about that so it was a very nice conversation and she was really sweet and she said well I don't think that you'll get a phone call tonight and I said well um it doesn't need to be tonight anyway because I'm going to my daughter's birthday um, get together and she says your daughter was born today on um, Adam West's birthday I said, yes she was she said what a story that is a lot of coincidences right, <laughs> right? there <laughs> I know my first child was born on Adam West's birthday who would have thought but anyway I said so you know whatever whatever time frame you know I would just um you know like she said what do you what do you want to what do you want us to do I said well um, I have pictures I want to be approved, the, the manuscript, I mean, just to see if there's any issues. And she said, I tell you what, she said, you will hear from someone. I'm not sure if it will be him, but you will definitely hear from someone. Three days later, the manager of the commission's office called me. And she said, um, she asked me, you know, what I have to send. I told her, she said, well, if you'll write a, a synopsis of the book, I'm like, a synopsis of the book? How do I write a synopsis? I don't remember. <laughs> I'm all in school. 
so I got Google out again. How do I write a book synopsis? Google wins again. Yes. <laughs> Google. <laughs> so I wrote this two-page synopsis, and, you know, a couple of days later, she um, said, okay, well, everything looks good. We'll send you the contract. And then it took about mm, three months, four months before the contract was sent to me. Wow. And then I, I had uh, a lawyer look at it, and they – the lawyer said they, you know, because of legal jargon and things like that. And she, and she said there's, they couldn't have been more than fair. She said it was, um, they were so fair about it. I mean, they, uh, they are allowing me to travel in and out of the book all over the world, whatever I want to do um, as Batgirl. The only thing is uh, it needs to stay in English. And um, not to have a banner because they didn't um, publish the book. So uh, they didn't want people to think that they did publish the book. So right. they not have a right. banner of that girl, but I can have pictures there. I mean, basically, and all they really asked for is five hard copies of the book. So I sent them five hard copies and two soft copies. <laughs> oh, wow. Here. And um, that's, that, was, that was good. I mean, that and, was, and who signed that contract? Uh, Jim, Jim Lee signed your contract. I, I, that's the best. Very part. cool. Jim Lee. Frame. Yeah. <laughs> you best have that framed because. Yes, and, and yeah. yes, you got to have that contract framed. Uh, you know, right next to the awesome. book. <laughs> right, yeah. That's right, exactly. <laughs> so basically, that contract gave you free reign to publish DC or Batman and Robin in character form, correct? There's... Yes, because I had to ask them that because I thought if they would not give me that okay, then I'm going to have to make up some kind of other superhero. Like, I mean, I, I, it was going to have to be, you know, another type story. I, it would be the story, but I'd have to make up names. And, and it wouldn't be the same, you know. So I'm really no, glad no, no. that they approved it. Right. The girl bat. <laughs> the girl bat. And her bat friends. <laughs> exactly. The man bat. Well, can I don't think you can say man bat either. <laughs> no, not man bat. No, yeah. man bat. Oh, <laughs> the male bat. And the male bat. And the dove. <laughs> no, I was very thankful. I was really excited and thankful. So, so um, let's see. I I know we had many many questions to ask you, but and I'm glad you're just you know, giving us all this information about your life and your story and everything you've been through and which is all positive, which is great. You know, you had an amazing experience, you know, and, and everyone needs to know this. Um, I, I'm just trying to think of a couple questions off the top of my head. I don't know if Nadia or LT has anything else they want to um, add. I had one more that I really was curious about. Um, like what kind of advice would you give to young girls? Like say when you were out, I, I know you definitely met a young um a lot of young girls and like their moms um is there anything in particular that like stood like a moment that stuck with you or a, a particular piece of advice that felt very personal um number one is a believe in you believe in yourself believe that you can do anything that you really want to do i know that sounds like a cliche but it's so true um you know, just um, get to know what you're comfortable with and not comfortable with. And that, I, I believe that's going to save you and save your spirit and save your heart of unnecessary pain and, um, and hurt. Because when you're in a situation and you know that it's just not right in your gut feeling or how you feel, you know, move yourself from it. I mean, just know who you are and have faith in that. And then um, you know, just I mean, be a superhero in someone's life because we all have villains every now and then and just help others when you can. And if you ever want to share a story and you know that somebody might need to read it and if you have a feeling that you should, you should. Um, but just remember to have, just to have the determination and the faith um, and the discipline to be able to do it. Don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah, well, you awesome. touched. Uh, you touched upon that uh, in your book uh, towards the end of your run as Batgirl. You you were telling yourself you needed to stay true to yourself, and you wanted to move on. You wanted to, uh, I guess, 
go to the next level of your life and right. you know and how you how you describe Burt Ward accepting that you know wholeheartedly backing you up that was awesome I mean yeah. that, to see that you wanted to pursue other things and you you wrote that you uh uh went to stewardess school you became a stewardess yeah 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 so you kept traveling I, <laughs> you I, kept I, traveling I, that's I what you did traveling. and while <laughs> I was a flight attendant I still traveled with them and even when I moved home I traveled with them for a while and you know I just um but it's hard to live you know 3,000 miles away on the other side of the country and you're trying to live somewhat of a normal life and you're going back and forth. Um, you know, I felt like I needed to make a decision and I could have decided to go back out there a few years later, but you know, that's when, um, you know, I got married to my children's father. I had the children. That's what I really wanted to do is bring them up in our life. But honestly, I, I, um, I have a huge faith and I feel like that there was a path that needed to be, um, taken. And um, along with Bert, I mean, he might not have known that at the time, you know, um, and I, I might have been the vehicle to um, say that because with his life and with my life, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of life I've lived since then. It might be another book one day to, to fill in the, the pieces. Oh, book two. <laughs> fill in the pieces. <laughs> but, you know, he's, he's done a lot and he might not have done the same thing if I was with him and I might not have, you know. Um, our children wouldn't be the same, probably, maybe. So, you know, you have to believe that things happen for reasons and and go with it. I mean, because if I always said, gosh, I wish I didn't leave. I mean, what if I'd stayed? I mean, if I'd stayed, I'd probably be an actress now because I was going down that road when I was out there. Um, right. But you Yeah, know, that was my next question. <laughs> I got scared, not scared, but then I, I mean, the more I became, um, I mean, North Carolina would have never left my, my heart, but more I became a Californian. I mean, I was, I was in that role. I mean, I was getting ready to take speech classes. I had, I had a portfolio. I was doing modeling. So I was definitely going down that path and I would have, um, I probably would have been an actress, you know, but you know, and I, I got a little nervous because I am, I'm, I'm, I have, I'm from a huge family. And every time I came home, you know, I just loved being there and I missed them so badly. And, you know, and, and I just, you know, I just decided that you can, you can leave, um, you know, it's, you have to be true to yourself and you have to feel in your heart what you, what is right and what you think is you should do. And if you um, believe in, you know, God or have faith in that, you know, you, you should sometimes, you, you should, you should take that road because if you don't, then you might wonder, you know, what do you have to say? Yep. Wise words, wise words. I like that. <laughs> good, good. But, um, I, there is one picture that I, that I saw, which I, which I love. There was a picture of you and Burt Ward in a room with all this Batman and Robin things behind you guys. Um, tell us about that picture. Was that, I think that was Jackson, Tennessee. Um, I remember um, someone, uh, Steve um, Rosinski, he had sent me that picture that he found online. And I didn't know that picture was there. So I'm sure there's probably pictures out in the world that people took back then that you know, that that's not on internet. Um, so he did find that in Senate. So I believe that was Jackson, Tennessee in 1979. I was sitting next to him. I had already signed my picture. So um, I probably was first and then maybe he was second at that point uh, because right. the picture was there and I, I, it appeared that I had already signed it. And then um, that little boy that was standing beside him um, his parents, or he probably laid my picture down. So yeah, yeah. you can in the and picture Bert, you can clearly see your your picture on the side. Uh, right. Yeah, the one I was like in the corner. Right, yeah. right. And, the, <laughs> and Bert and I traveled also without Adam. He, all, he and I also traveled together, just the right. two of us in different cities. Right. I mean, there's there's hopefully we find more pictures of you out there. You know, because you traveled everywhere. People took pictures. With yeah. the book, I feel like more people are going to, like, reach out now. Yeah, I, yeah. I hope so, because we would love to see any pictures anyone has and, and you know, send it to us. You know, that way we can send, we'll pass it on to you and that you'll have more great. pictures. I mean, that'd be awesome. I, I would love to see that. 
Um, what else do you have, LT? You have any other questions for Karen? Um, no, I mean, I wanted to circle back real quick to your uh, celebrity meetings, and I, I, we, we discussed this uh, on Instagram about you meeting John Wayne, and yeah. I am the John biggest Wayne. John Wayne fan. I mean, <laughs> especially coming from Texas, you know, he was the man, and. Uh, Real quick, describe how you how 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 that was. I mean, well, he looked larger than larger than a wall. You know, he was big, <laughs> and and he was like larger than life. I mean, I remember us walking, and I saw him. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's John Wayne coming our way. And my stepfather and my father watched all of his movies, okay. and um, and so I knew, you know, who he was, and he he was walking toward us. And um, Bert, I mean, people, you know, when they met Bert, I mean, he was also a, uh, he was huge to them, you know, I mean, everybody was excited to meet Bert as he was of everyone else. So John Wayne, he was excited to meet Bert. He was Robin, you know, so um, he, um, he met Bert, he held, and, you know, and he was so big standing next to us. I mean, he was so nice. I mean, he, he, he was like John Wayne. And then, um, so he, um, he looked at me, he introduced me to him and he said, well, hello, little lady. I'll never forget him saying that, you know, and he just awesome. looked, hello, little lady. And he just looked at me <laughs> and I just was speechless. I mean, it was, and then wow. he, he passed away that year. So that, I think that was in January. Um, I think that was in January, and then um, he passed away that summer, maybe June. Or he actually, he passed away on June eleventh, nineteen seventy nine. That is my daughter's birthday. Wow. Well, twenty some years later, I know that because, like I said, I'm a super fan, and uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Was, uh, yeah, I remember it was that year, so I was really thankful that I was able to meet him, and and you know, and and. I did research because Adam, he was, uh, Adam was an inch taller than John Wayne. Really? Uh, mm -hmm. oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And, but John Wayne seemed a lot larger because he was brawl. He was big. And the way he carried himself and the way he walked on the, mm -hmm. on the movies, he walked that way. Yeah. That and, real lot of walk. Yeah. Yeah. He walked <laughs> that way. I mean, he, you know, so I was really, he was one, one that really impressed me. And, that's awesome. Can you can imagine meeting John Wayne, high LT. <laughs> I would just fall over. <laughs> so, um, just out of curiosity, what's Burt Ward doing right now? Well, um, thanks for asking that. Um, he is, um, you know, he was the Cape Crusader and he always will be. Um, but he's also a canine crusader now. Um, he and his wife, Tracy, um, they have a... Um, rescue company that rescues and um dogs and sets them up for adoptions and i think they started it maybe in 1994 and they've they've rescued over uh, probably about now 20,000 dogs and had wow dogs. amazing that's amazing dogs, like you know great dane um huge dog and um he has a big ranch and a lot of them live there and he started a dog food company that's having dogs um, and now cats live two or three times longer than their age. And, you know, huge dogs don't live that long. So these yeah. dogs are living. I mean, some, I think, are in their 20s. But he, wow. Uh, oh, wow. And, Amazing. Um, I had, and I had a friend told me that um, he thought about me when he went to get some dog food because he saw, you know, the dog food bag and it was bird on there and so on. He said, that his dog loves the dog food too. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I'm seeing pictures right now of, of the actual, of the yep. uh, dog food. Yeah, it's got Burt Ward's picture on it. Burt Ward's <laughs> all full of colors. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Very nice. Well, that's I mean, really cool that he's doing that. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's beautiful. That's mm -hmm. good. I mean, it's, especially me being a dog lover myself, you know, I've, I've pretty much always had dogs my whole life. Uh, you know what, LT, we should put a link on our website. So oh, yeah, people definitely. could go and uh, go straight to Burt Ward's uh, website, you know, order the yeah, food or it, know more it about it. He's got cat food too. I've got a cat, so maybe I'll do some ordering. 
here after there, the interview. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a cat too. She lived um, till March and she was 23 and a half years old. What? Wow. Isn't that great? Look at that. <laughs> yeah, she was awesome. I, I had her, uh, my daughter wanted her when she was six. And my daughter was 30 when she passed away. So, mm. of course, when my daughter took off for college and things like that, I kept her. But, yeah, it was, it was um, so I think I think animals are, are just, um, they're, they're um, angels without wings, you know, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> for all of us. So, um, but, yeah, yeah I mean, shows, can it I? It shows that Bert Ward continued his uh, heroic duty. I mean, as far yeah. as. Oh, that's Robin, great. That's awesome. Um, could I say a few things like yes, and lines of course. And yes, you can say whatever you want, Karen. Okay, You're that girl. <laughs> <laughs> so coming out, uh, you know, it's amazing how things happen. You know how uh, things happen in your life and just uh, the time. You know, and just how this did happen. You were asking what, how it started. You know, I reconnected with um, Gigi Ward, Bert's daughter. I mean, Bert's sister and his daughter Lisa on Facebook. Right. And I had um, not been involved with them all those years. And this was the beginning of, of, of it all. And we reconnected on Facebook. And because I didn't get on Facebook for years, I just got on there seven years ago. So um, in 2016, we reconnected. And that's how it somewhat started. And um, we talked for a few months. And then I went out to meet them, to uh, visit them twice that year. And then, so that was um, like June, July and uh, October. And then when I came back um, after the October trip, something hit me on the airplane about the story and maybe people might want to read it um, or hear about it. And then, you know, and then I talked to my daughter and she thought that it was time that she thought um, fans might want to hear it. And then I thought, you know, I do want people to know before we get any older about what, who they really were in life and what you think about Batman and Robin and what you think about Adam West and Bert, where they really were. Um, and so I, I put it into play um, January that year, 2017. I started um, just jotting down things in a little journal about stuff. And, you know, I'm very nocturnal like that girl is. And I could, <laughs> I could, um, stay up all night I have to make myself go to sleep and I would write things down the next day I would look at them like wow that uh, I wrote that it's amazing and um but then you know as that year 2017 unfortunately um Adam had passed away um in right. June that year so but going back uh 2016 when I first went out there that's when DC had their rebirth you know they moved from uh, New York to California I didn't know it. I, I was just, I didn't know until I started research. I'm like, wow. So I don't know if it was just the line of synchronicity or what it, it could have been, how it all happened. But I, I know that, that that's when they ha that happened in 2016. And then 2017, you know, they wrote this. You know, this is yes. the 50th anniversary, Batgirl 50th anniversary. And it's oh, nice yeah. And it tells the whole story about that girl they published it in 2017 and and also the omnibus that year of that girl which is the bronze age that girl time frame that i was she they had an omnibus that came out december 17 and then in uh 19 december i mean march of 2019 you know i finished my book in 2019 and i actually published it in november so just that timeline and then um you know, Christina Hodson is she is writing the screenplay of that girl, and hopefully that will happen. I know with COVID, it has um, stopped a lot of um, things going on right now, but I hope she's still working on it. But but right. with these things that happen, and I'm still involved with um, the Bat family in California. You know, with the Ward family, with his sister and, and daughter, and and his granddaughter. She came to visit me a couple of times in North Carolina, Katie. Um, matter of fact, my book launch was in February 9th um, this year, and she came um, to be part of that, um, which was really special. Um, right. And so, you know, just getting involved that much with this now, it, it's like impeccable timing. And I'm just so thrilled it, it happened. I mean, and, you know, it's amazing how I, for all those years I didn't, and then now I've decided to. 
that all these things have come out that I've, I've, I've witnessed and seen. I'm like, wow, this is, and, and I believe nothing happens. Um, it, nothing's coincidental. Things happen for reasons and right. they happen. And I'm open for the doors to open with this. I want to take it. I'm waiting to see where it's going to go. And I'm open for anything um, that goes with this. I, I feel like my book was a platform for many things that could happen. Um, I had like 45, um, well, 43 um, Comic-Con set this year and, and two comic stores that wow. COVID, put those COVID. COVID, COVID wiped them out. COVID everybody. Yeah, COVID. And, and I like to have the platform because um, and maybe writing my next book, because my life has changed so many times. I've done a lot of things in, within this life. And, and I, I might write another book about that just to show people you know, uh, what can happen in your life and just always have the silver lining and just move forward. Um, and, and then, you know, maybe write about it because someone else might need to, to read it. But, um, and also uh, just, I, I have, um, I know five women that have lost their children with opioids and maybe it could be, I know it's, it's really sad and, I, and there's a lot out there in, in, in the world. And I know these five women um, personally that I've met um, through, you know, my children's friends or through other friends that have introduced me to these women. And possibly I might write a story about them one day and let them um, come forward and talk about what happened and why. And maybe we might visit schools. You know, I mean, I'm just waiting for this to move forward to see what's going to happen next. All right. Well, we're hoping that this this little interview, you know, goes, you know, viral, as they say, you know, we can really get your word out there, you know, definitely as a club, we're going to plan to uh, post this and uh, make a page as part of our web page, you know, dedicated to you and your cause, your, you know, your where to find your book, stuff like that, a little bio, you know. Well, thank you. And I'll post it as well. Um, but yeah, I have a couple of my books here if you want me to show them and know where they can get them. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so this one, um, okay, this one is Amazon. Um, Amazon, it's, uh, they can purchase this through Amazon. That Driven West. That Driven West. And if they do purchase one um, and they mention, let's just say when I do go to Comic-Con and they mention, um, I think, I heard that when you go to Comic-Con, you have to sell your signature or whatever. I'm not sure. I'm going to do whatever I'm supposed to do, I guess. But <laughs> if they mention they got a book and they saw my interview with you all, I will definitely sign it for free. And they can they don't have to stand in the line if there is a line. I'm hoping there's a line that shows that people. Oh, I hope there's a very long line. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, we got to make a line. <laughs> Me too. But uh, you three don't have to wait on that, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> Thank you. Know, Thank you. That whoever buys a book through you all, I mean, mentions um, that they saw my interview through you all, that I won't have them stand in a long line. The long, the long, they can just come up and let somebody know, and I'll go and sign it, and I won't charge or whatever that's supposed to be. But, yeah, yeah. I'll be glad to do that if they do. And, and this one here, blurb, um, blurb.com, they can this one's also a soft back, but it's glossy. The other one's more of a matte. So mm, I'm not sure right. what, what they want to um purchase. And then the hard copy, I had to find blurb to make the hard copy for DC Comics. So this is a hard copy that they can oh, that hard good. copy. Yeah. yeah. So and it's yeah, like that. It feels like oh, a comic. Thought, let me see the back again. Let me see the back again. The back that look at that. Oh, That's I beautiful. love that. Did I you pick the that. images? No, let, oh I'm so glad you asked about this. <laughs> I feel this depicts my life perfectly it's like i'm standing in the middle of a comic i'm in reality standing in the middle of a comic looking into my past yeah um, oh, this was cool. a picture that uh, dc comics chose for me years ago to show at the um you know for people to buy or or, or whatever at the um at the car shows and, um and and this is um and and i just love that picture and it just it just shows yeah. i'm looking now, this was created, uh, as well as this was created, um, by David Bustetta. 
and he is an illustrator in Spain. And oh, wow. he was an Amazing earth angel job. for me. He reached out to me to be a part of, when Adam died, he has a company called Android Paranoid in uh, Spain, Galicia, Galicia, Spain. Well, he reached out to me to see if I would be a part of um, his uh, third, um, his third um, story or, um, and, and to see, to talk about Adam, since I right. did know him, to honor Adam. And he had other people on there that knew Adam. And I was, uh, I was so thrilled that he asked me and uh, he just sent me a message when he saw um, my Facebook message about Adam. He, I mean, I was proud That's of him, great. and you know, having courage to send me a message and ask me if I would do that. And I was honored. I, I was, of course, I'd love to. And then I said, by the way, I might need you to, I might, and I feel like he was meant to be, uh, I might need you to um, have a, to work on a project uh, with me. And he said, what is it? I said, well, I'm writing a book. I need an illustrator for the front and the back part of the book. And he said, I'd love to. He immediately jotted down um, uh, this back in pencil. And he sent that to me. And I said, I love it. Absolutely. Mm. And he put all the That's colors. Perfect. And, yeah, I sent him the picture and he did all the colors. I mean, it's just, you know, he, I mean, these were real pictures that I sent. This, this is the one that DC Comics used. Um, that with their logo on it. I mean, he made it in, you know, the pencil, but um, the big one, um, I, I believe you might have that one, but then all these, this is the, this is the one, you know, he, he put in pencil with uh, Bert um, showing me a pose. And I believe you all might have that one. Yes, too. and, and yeah. you put that right up on the screen too. But yeah, he, he just did that. And then he uh, sent him a picture and he made this, but of course my hair was dark there. So he made it red to look like, you know, back mm -hmm. he had red hair. Um, and I just absolutely loved what what David did. And I, I'm really glad that I had this opportunity because um, I'm not met him. We worked together for two years and he was always there anytime I needed to, to ask him questions. And, and we, we got to know each other really well. And I'm still not met him. And I hope I, I do in person one of these days. Um, and um, and he, he did not charge me. Oh, oh, that's amazing. Wow. That's Not anything. He did that. Yeah. Um, he, he was honored to do it and he was happy about it and he did not charge me. Um, now, I did have to get him to release um, the, um, to release it to me. Right, right. Uh, DC Comics asked me. Uh, also with the suit, um, Judy, she had, she can't make another one. So both of them had to release the, um, you know the copyright to me of that they they can't um do oh, so it. you can't get another suit made without oh i can she can't make another one she can't make another one like yeah. for sale or whatever but if i asked her to make another one she can okay like if you were to do cons would you be allowed to wear one in other words i have the right in other words i have the right to uh, this and that i mean because they had to release that and david was so he was fine with it he did not okay. have a problem and then Judy, she had to release. She she wouldn't make another one unless I asked her to. But yes, DC Comics said that I can wear it any. I can when I travel, I can wear it or I don't wear it. Whatever I want to do, they gave me the rights that I can I can do that. And I That's can good. this this I can wear. So yay! That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So um, if I if I'm right, uh, everyone could buy your book on Amazon. Okay. And the other company is? Blurb. Blurb. Mm -hmm. Okay. So dot com, blurb.com. So, you know, Amazon Blurb, uh, soft cover, you can get an ebook, hard cover. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Everybody go there, buy this book, definitely. Um, I also, you are going to be signing a book for us. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. So Karen is definitely willing to sign a book for us which we will do a giveaway and someone will have a signed copy of her book. So, I mean, I'm excited for that. So, you know, we're going to definitely put that on our, on our, our website and our Instagram page. So people can join that contest free of charge uh, as just a giveaway. And that was very nice of you to do for us. So I know Thanks someone lucky out there is going to get a signed copy, especially for their collection. 
So oh, yeah. that'd be great. Um, trying to think what else that we haven't asked that we should ask us, you know, this is, you know, an amazing story. Uh, anything come to hmm. mind? I think no, we know I, mean, I, t- I touched on, on, on everything I read. I mean, I, like I said, I love the book. Uh, you know, it, it, it really came across as endearing uh, to you and to the characters, Batman and Robin, Burt Ward and Adam West, you know, and I love that about it. And, and, and how you've carried yourself since that, that, that it really shows. And I, I appreciate that. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you saying that also. Um, but yeah, the empowerment of women, just like uh, Nadia said, um, we do have power and we have power in what we say and how we uh, treat people. And yeah. I do want to say that. And I've kept that in my life. Um, uh, ever since I I left there, because they taught me, um, Bert and Adam, well, you know, they taught me a lot, and and Batman and Robin, they taught me a lot of of uh, knowing who I am and um, showing, you know, in front of people that people watch you when you don't even realize they're watching you, and they hang on to every word when that you don't even realize that they are doing that, and um, to be kind, you know, it doesn't it's it's easy, you know, just be kind and just show people you care, you know, and that, and, and, and women, you know, we, we have that, we have that ability to be strong and soft at the same time. And it's not easy to, to, to take that character, but you can do it. I mean, you can. So. Right. So, um, also I wanted to add, uh, me and LT were having a conversation. We want to make you an honorary uh, celebrity guild member. Oh. So we are going to dedicate a page for you on our website. Aww. So everyone can get links uh, to your book. Thank uh, you. You know, to your Instagram page, you know, so they people can start following you. And also we are going to have a link on our website for uh, Burt Ward for his Gentle Giants yeah. food. So people can go out there and purchase his dog food as well. Um, I think this was great. I'm, I'm so honored and happy you came on our show. You know, you know, we all got to meet you and know you. And I hope everybody else got to know you as well. So um, thank you. Thank you. This thank was you. An thank honor. You. This is an honor. And it was nice meeting you, all three of you. And um, thank you for asking me. And, um, and I'm, I'm excited. And thank you for giving me that honorary on your, um, your, your page. That's exciting. You're welcome. Anytime. So everyone, thank you for uh, watching at the Comic Collectors Guild YouTube channel. Uh, we'll have a lot more coming up. Hopefully Karen comes back in the future, maybe book two or just to hang out with us. <laughs> so thanks a lot and come again. Bye. Bye. Later.